Well, good morning. This is John here. It is uh, October 23rd, no, 20th, 2023, here in the beautiful city of Temecula. And it's going to be another hot day. Yesterday it was about, yeah, about 98. Eight o'clock at night <laughs> last night it was like 87. So here's the 1992 Mercedes 300E with the M104 engine and good grief for probably about, I don't know, a year. I've been working on this. Uh, this is my son's car. He's taking my van today so I can work on it. It's Friday. And, um, yeah, so if you've been following along, you know the story of the car overheats randomly only during hot, hot days. And, um, why does he have his taillights on? Weird. Um, so, yeah, so... At first, last summer, it started doing it last summer. It seems like it was last summer, maybe the year before. I don't know. It's hard to remember. That's why I do these these videos. You know, I figured, well, if I could work on his car, and there's always, like, something to work on because it's a 30-year-old car, you know. I mean, I try to get everything working on it that I can so he doesn't have to go out and buy a, buy a new or used car and... Uh, you know the prices on cars are they're still crazy i mean they were crazy during the pandemic and that kind of like everybody decided well yeah i'm going to ask twice as much for my used car so eventually he'd like to get another car but for the meantime keep this thing running and it's you know it's a great great little car so when i first started overheating you know um i said you know let's just uh we haven't really touched the cooling system in i don't know 10 years you know i mean a li little bit here and there regular flushes and stuff but so last summer i said well first of all let's just let's replace all the mechanical parts of the cooling system you know so we got the new radiator we got the the hoses, uh, we did the water pump, the fan clutch, expansion tank, uh, cap, uh, thermostat, uh, coolant sensor, this and that. And it seemed to be doing better and he wasn't complaining about it. But then every once in a while, yeah, I was, uh, you know, at a drive through and eight cars in front of me and I was idling with the AC on and the temperature went up almost to the red. I shut it off, or, you know, sh shut the AC off. It's like when you're stressing the system out, you know, AC on full max, you know, everything getting hot, hot outside and stop and go traffic. These cars, a lot of complaints are that, you know, they, that they'll overheat and stuff. What's supposed to happen is you know, you got the low speed fan, auxiliary fans in the front. You have a fan clutch, um, you know, between the engine and radiator. Yeah, so the, <clears throat> the fan clutch, from what I've read, it, uh, it locks up and the, the mechanical fan starts spinning it. It locks up at about 3000 RPM and above, like when you're driving but when you're idling stop and go traffic it's it's not locked up it's not cooling okay so and you have your um auxiliary fans in the front there's two of them electric um there's a low speed and that only seems to come on when uh, when you're using the ac most cars are like that um there's a high-speed function of these fans, and these functions are controlled by, you know, they're turned on by relays. There's two relays in the fuse box, right? 
Um, well, I was going, okay, the low speed function works, but I have never in 10 years ever heard the high speed function, you know. Um, I don't drive the car every day. My son does. You know, here in the driveway, I go, okay, well, it, you know, I, I guess the high speed works. I don't know. So I started looking into it, and the way you test, uh, kind of like a self-test, is there's a coolant temperature sensor on the head, and you pull the connector off of it, and you have your ignition key to the number two engine off, and you just have the key on, and the fan should come on. It tells you that everything is working. Well, this car did not do that. I had a black one of these, and it did do that. And I was going, well, maybe they changed something in this model year. No. So, short, you know, long story short, um, uh, they're not working, okay? So, I traced everything, and everything kind of pointed to the climate control unit, the push button unit, and the dash. Okay, the uh, coolant temperature sensor, when it goes up to a certain degrees, 105 Celsius and above, it uh the it's like a switch it's called a switch or a sensor and when it closes it completes a like a ground circuit or something and it through a, a wire it's it's hooked up to the climate control unit the climate control unit says oh overheating and then it sends that ground signal to the high speed relay and uh, completes that circuit in there and fires the high-speed fans. So I was going, well, oh, there's something wrong with the climate control unit. And over the years, I've bought used ones, uh, remanufactured ones, and none of them seem to make the high-speed fan work. You know, I go, well, I'm just getting crummy climate control units off eBay, and there's always something wrong with this used stuff, so... You know, but then the one that was uh, supposedly remanufactured, I wouldn't didn't, wouldn't fire the high speed fans. So, um, have somebody on uh, on my YouTube channel there, uh, Brittany Wright, said, John, one of your electrical connectors is wired wrong to the climate control unit, and. You know, I had a sneaking suspicion, maybe, but I was going, God, it looks like it's all factory. All the, you know, the, before I undid the cloth Mercedes tape on the wire, you know, to the connector, it looked like it had never been disturbed or anything. Um, but then I, I was going, well, I'm at a, kind of at a dead end. I went to the climate control unit, and there's 14 pins on one side of the push button 14 pins on the other side all different colored wires what are those colors i could not find that anywhere on the internet so i took the lids off of these connectors and i made my own little color thing right a pin out and um Brittany wright looked at that and said oh one on the, the passenger side is wrong you need to lift all those connectors uh all those pins or whatever they are uh up and move them all down one notch because this one had has has two uh there were two slots in the electrical connector that were empty pin one and two and it's supposed to be pin 13 and 14 that are empty so i was going well so we don't know um i don't think it left the factory like that I think somebody rearranged things on me. This, you know, we had a previous owner on this, and who knows, you know, this thing's blown quite a few head gaskets due to overheating, probably because these fans have never worked on high speed. The high speed cools it down really quick. Um, so today, I'm going to attempt to open that connector and move everything down one notch and then pull the electrical connector on the coolant thing turn the key to two and see if that solves the high speed and that's what i'm going to be doing right now okay there's the the two fans right here that's your relay box over there a fuse box 
here's your coolant temperature sensor right here okay okay first thing i disconnect the battery right okay now i got no power that's good um okay i can start taking the climate control unit apart and there's the climate control unit so it's real simple um a handy little yeah Yeah, there's just two screws here. Actually, really simple. Thank God. I don't want to drop it down that pole there. Okay, put those right there. This thing just lifts up. Look how simple that is, huh? Put that somewhere where I won't sit on it. Yeah, this is one of the used climate control units. This is that switch, uh, the high-speed fan switch hack. I was able to, uh, to get the fans to work by putting in a switch bypassing this whole unit and applying it just basically applies a ground signal to the uh, wire that comes out of this unit it's called the trigger wire for the high speed relay um yeah i just took one of these switches out the headrest switch that nobody ever uses and it's basically a on and off switch um you can see all, the, all these slots for other uh, options for the car i don't know what they are heated cooled something but uh this thing gets it's not the best i didn't pay anything for this so the battery seems to last i don't think i've charged it in years and it's always charged <laughs> but it's great by these little you know little screw things that constantly Take time like that. Uh, where else is there? There's, I think, this, this. Yeah. Yeah, I think today's hopefully the last day, hot day of the year, because I can't take too much more of this. I think this afternoon you'll start feeling maybe some some coolness coming in. But it's Southern California, you know, October. For a while there, there was a week where it was like 70 degrees. And I, oh man, this is great. It felt like air conditioning. You know? Okay, so, so I got this. Boom. There is the unit. There's the wire that I added to the, uh, what is this? Uh, oh yeah, these are just two grounds. Okay, yeah, so this wire here, it goes down here and that goes to the canine relay. And this is just a ground wire right here that I uh, robbed from the old headrest switch, which had two grounds on it. So I just used that to uh, send a ground signal, you know, down this loom to the thing. And this is the connector right here. We're gonna pop this off and we're just gonna, I'm gonna have to undo this again. <laughs> Resolder, and so I can't tell you how many times I've had this apart. But theoretically, someone got in here and rearranged this. They didn't rearrange the order of the the wires, you know. They just took the whole thing and lifted it up, and then moved it to these. Uh, they moved it back. That's right. I have to move it. 
forward like this. Why would somebody do that? I was going, is this literally the factory like this? Now, the only thing we can think of is somebody years ago, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, you know, maybe 15 years ago, they took this apart and moved those wires back uh, one position. Who, who would have done that? And why would they do something like that to defeat the high-speed fan? I don't know. You know, there was, um, when we got the car, <sighs> I had to take the cluster out because some of the illumination uh, at night wasn't working and I found the problem on the instrument cluster part of a part of the uh, printed circuit board one of the ribbon one of the, you know the traces or of copper had shorted out and was all rolled up and I jumped it with a piece of wire got the lights back on but in the meantime when I had all of this apart and this console out I noticed that there's a ground point down here somewhere with a, just a bolt going to the to the frame with about five grounds and they were all cut brown wires they were all cut you go who would do that you know i was thinking uh stereo installer right because this thing like monster speaker wires underneath these mats and going to the back um there was evidence that there might have been an amplifier in the trunk um maybe a stereo installer was you know his whatever he was installing was blowing a fuse or something who knows or or he or he uh he wanted to get this unit out to access more of the wiring here for the dash you know uh for the speaker wires here because you know it, we did notice that that uh there's some weird random wire right here yeah, what is that? I think it's just go. I think it goes to a speaker over there. So maybe he pulled all this out, unplugged this. One of these came apart, and all the things came out, and said, "Oh well, I'll just put it back in." Like you know, you know, maybe all the wires pins popped out of the thing, which can happen. And he just you know put it back together wrong. Okay, yeah, I just you can just stick a screwdriver right here and. This part will pop off like that. And you can see these pins are loose already. Uh, so much junk in this car here. Let's get rid of this thing. Yeah. It's so bright. And the heat's just coming in burning. Okay, there. Um so yeah so i gotta move these there's two empty holes right here these are supposed to be the empty holes i'll show you the schematic after we figure out how to get this switched over do it real quick okay so i'm thinking about revising my um high speed fan um a switch on the dash uh, I have one video on uh, high-speed fan hack so that's if your climate control unit is not working right something's wrong like the way I have it you know it's not triggering the high-speed K9 so um, what I'm thinking of doing, I'm going to correct this situation so it's outputting a signal, and it's it's a got to be not 100% sure, but it's, after reading a, a lot about relays and and stuff and people installing switches to turn on their electric fans earlier, you know, <coughs> hot rods and stuff like that, you know, idling in the heat, they develop a lot of heat, and they want to be able to control that. So you can um, have the automatic system where this coolant temperature sensor uh, is a switch. They call it a switch or a sensor. It's in the uh, mine. It's in the head. 
about the middle of the head. And um, I think it's about 105 Celsius is when the switch closes and it, and it creates a ground signal um, to the climate control unit. And when that happens, the climate control unit will send a ground signal to pin 85 right there um, and that's what turns does the power it, the ground turns the power and powers the fans it completes a circuit same with uh, let's see like if you look at this uh, refrigerant high pressure switch right there's a ground right there there's a switch that's the pressure switch there the receiver dryer and it completes that circuit and sends the ground signal to pin 85 and that completes everything and sends power and turns on the fan um, that's the low that's a low speed right there but uh, somehow the high pressure switch is hooked into it. Yeah, it says high pressure. So that's kind of unusual, but um, anywho. So what I'm thinking is uh, if I keep my, I want to be able to keep my dash switch to turn the high speed on when I want. And have it work automatic by the coolant temperature sensor too. And, you know, have that working. So since my thinking could be right, could be wrong, my thinking is all this needs is a ground signal for it to work and turn on the fan. So if I was to take this wire, which I know which one it is, it's a brown and gray. Um, and I could just, just tap, you know, cut the wire right here join these two ends together, add another wire from uh, the switch, so right there, you know, have all those three soldered together right there. Then you have your, you know, your switch, and the switch, the other side of the switch will be a ground that I get from the dashboard. So when you turn the switch on, it sends that ground through here, boom, like that. When the switch is off, not using it, temperature goes above 105 Celsius, then uh, this closes and it sends a ground signal and does the exact same thing. So you're not deleting this sensor signal. You know, it's still gonna be automatic but if you want extra cooling, you flip that switch and it sends a ground signal and does its thing. So that's <clears throat> that's one thing I'm uh, I'm gonna experiment with that. I think that'll work. Some people will take and pull the relay out and they'll put in the sockets, right? You have sockets, I think four or five of these, four, I think four on this one. In the sockets, they'll put a, a, you know, a ground wire in the socket and then jam the, the relay back in there so that, uh, so that basically you have a, a wire, a weird wire coming out of this thing. And that is run to a dash mounted switch and the switch has got a ground at the dashboard or something. So that that extra wire will send the ground there and turn on the fans. People have done it that way. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it, but the base, basically you want to send a ground signal to pin 85 on most all cars that have these type of relays, multi-purpose relays. So that's what, uh, that's what we'll try. 
I really don't want to have a random wire. If I have to jam a wire in there and stick it in there and just have this random wire going through the dashboard to a switch, you can always do that, but you know, it's like, God, I don't like it. I think this other way might be really clean. Look, I got them all moved over. Not too hard. This wire, I need to undo this tape, and there's a there's brown trigger wire. I think it's this pin. Yeah, it's this pin right here. It's a gray and brown. It's cut somewhere right here. I just got to get rid of this. Um, what's funny is, you know, I got this post going on Ben's World overheating again. Super long post, you know. I th we thought it was the radiator cap was faulty and it started like that. And then uh, one guy, S. Bart, said, John, auxiliary fans, auxiliary fans, something's going on there. And he was right. So um, and then towards the end of the post where I'm at now, people are saying that these were installed and they have like little barbs that push down into here and to keep these things from flying out and give a strong connection. There are no barbs on any of this. Everything just pulled out. You know, they're saying you need to take little screwdrivers and push these barbs in and get the, each pin out one at a time. No, this thing just went, whoop, <laughs> it just came out. It's a good thing that I made a diagram of these wire colors because that was my worst nightmare was uh, if that comes apart, where do they go? And I've seen posts of people um, where I, one guy bought a 190E and both of these were just wires hanging out and he had no idea, you know, how to put it back together. Okay, uh, time get unwrap the tape, cut that wire, and resolder. Boy, is it hot. Okay, so I have this pin in the right spot, hopefully. I just twisted those together for now in case I got to put it back in case this doesn't work. Uh, let's try doing this. Okay, this is the self test. So you take this and disconnect it. And then you take your key. Um, oh, you know what? I better hook the battery back up. Uh, no big sparks. Thank you. No big sparks. Thank you. Um, then turn the key. Get out of here. God. Now that's off. That's connected. Let's see what happens. Whoa. Yeah. So that, that was, somebody changed those wires. Can you believe that? Somebody, I mean, you don't know how long I've been chasing this problem down. You, you just don't even know how long. I mean, when we first got the car, it had a blown head gasket. We bought it, uh, he bought it off eBay. It had a blown head gasket. Then I researched it and oh, well, yeah, these cars like to blow head gaskets. But I must, in 10 years, I must have replaced a head gasket three times. Why? It's not normal. Head gasket should last 100,000 miles, not uh, 10, 15, 18,000 miles. Um, what I think happened with this car with the head gaskets blowing, these engines don't like getting overheated. They're known to blown head gaskets when they overheat. Um, and that high speed function, function has never worked since we've owned the car for 12 years plus. So that explains a whole lot. Now we need to find that person that switched those pins, did the switcheroo. I mean, come on. 
Don't do that. Why would they do that? I think the I think they were taking that thing out, climate control unit to work on stereo stuff, and they disconnected those connectors, and all those wires just popped out, and they put it back wrong. That's the only explanation, because there's no way that, you know, it would have left the factory like that. I mean, they test every function in the car, you know, that. Uh, Wow, I am stoked. So now I'm going to solder that back together. Um, I'm going to leave that uh, that uh, manual switch override. I'm going to try a couple different things. But I want to be able to, this way, this way, before the coolant sensor there, that two pin for 10 years. I mean, it was doing nothing. Now, I should still start the car and see if all the air conditioning functions work and all that. I think they do. If the high-speed high speed van turned on like that, that is... I am totally, totally happy. Okay, now I've got to try my switch. Everything is temporary. Let's plug back in as normal. Battery's on. So I'm pretty sure we'll see Either there'll be smoke or fuse will blow. Uh, climate control unit off. This is what switch I'm working on. Um, I should be able to, yeah, got battery. Turn this to on. Okay, turn this. There you go. Sweet. So, oh, where's the plug in? Huh. Let's see what I'm getting. Oh man, is it hot? I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of to the middle. Yeah, things doing some weird stuff. Uh, it looks, it's flashing on screen, but it's not. Can we see that? Well, it says 12.3. So I turn the fan on. It's 12. It's good. It's not really going down. Um, so that's the override right there. See what I did? To you guys that want to explore this that's the electric antenna going down um if you want to explore this all i did with this switch here this is a uh what was it it was the rear headrest switch which is rarely used and um I use that it's just an on off on off switch and it had some grounds to the uh headrest wires it had two brown wires always ground on mercedes so i put one side of the switch i, I hooked those wires to the other side is this red wire going to this bundle and then traveling down this wire uh, to the relay and turning the fans on see it doesn't turn on with the key out of there that's why i didn't want it to activate by itself or something it only works with the key on and driving and stuff like that so i'm going to solder this mess up but uh yeah that fan uh, you know you get going and it gets past that hundred mark there and starts rising you know halfway to the 120 and you turn that on within 30 seconds it'll bring it back down to a you know maybe 87 or something we'll experiment but hey at least i'm getting somewhere man i was spinning my wheels because i just didn't have um you know i didn't have the the pin out on what these wires i'd found them pro everything was okay in the car but everything pointed to something with the climate control unit that's why i kept getting different climate control units and going oh it's faulty it's faulty you know okay let's get another one okay let's get another one let's try this one 
they were all doing the same thing. So we still have to put this back together and then turn the AC and make sure every, all the functions work. I think they will, you know, we'll test that out. All right, I got it all back together. So far, so good. We got 13.8, which is pretty good. Uh, AC is off. Oh, there, and now the AC is off. We got about 13, 14 volts, which is good. Um, high speed fan? I can hear it. Yeah, you can hear it. Okay. Well, let's try the climate control unit. It's on low speed. That's good. High speed. Yeah, high speed is the one that really sucks the juice, but that's not bad. Um, cold air coming out of all the vents. Uh, what else? I haven't tried the heater, but I'm sure everything else works. And check this out. Uh, uh, if I go, uh, this has never worked. This auto. Now it works. Is that crazy? Now that that button has never worked in this car. I'll try driving it around, but hey, you know, I mean, come on. And then at will, he can, uh, you know, he sees that temperature going up to like right here, not working. You can fire those high speed fans. They are loud. You should be able to hear how loud they are. The low speed is different. It's lower. And it's really not sucking up too much juice. Now remember this, this little plug-in it's a good reference but the actual voltage you test on the battery it's going to be a little bit higher it might be 13.5 this is just lower because of the the drop of voltage through the wiring here great yeah that's a hot, uh, low speed can you hear it Oh, it's been a couple minutes and the low speed fans are still on. They used to cycle on and off. I wonder if changing those pins around, uh, I'm sure it cleared up a lot of issues. Because I know at the Lincoln and the Kia, when we turn the AC on, the fans are they're on low speed all the time until you, you, know, you turn it off or the engine uh, cools down, the sensor cools down. So that's good, yeah, good lord. Okay, so I've been driving it for 10 minutes up and down this hill here. Temperature is good. Uh, low speed fans are on. Let's see if they're, let's see if they stayed on. Voltage is good. Let's see if they're still on or if they're cycling. <laughs> yeah, I can hear them. So they're on. Before, the way it was wired, they were cycling on and off. You know? so it totally messed everything up. This is the first time in 12 years where it's things been working right. Not overheating. Let's get the seat belt on. Oh my god, what a journey this has been. 
So big shout out to uh, Brittany uh, right there in um, Palm Springs. That's good voltage. I'm kind of simulating him uh, being at a uh, drive-through, getting his hamburger, the AC on. That's when it starts to overheat, so. So I think, uh, yeah, those auxiliary cooling fans, they have a big, big uh, part. And then I got this. I can hear that high speed coming on. Drains a little bit, not horrible. A lot better than before. Gosh, it's like a new car. For a while there, we were like, what is wrong with this car? So I guess, I don't know what lesson is there. I guess the lesson is, is just keep, keep moving forward. <laughs> You know, the only thing that that I just, you know, was messed up on was the was on the pin out. I, I, want, I need to know where these wires go. What they, you know, what do they do? Are they in the right location? You know, um, why, why are there uh, two empty empty holes and plug and they're not filled with anything when the other one is all filled? So there's still two empty holes, but it's 13 and 14 according to the schematic. Shows those are supposed to be the empty ones. Yeah. And you know, it's 92 degrees outside Fahrenheit. Um, so, I don't think anybody else will ever have this problem. I mean, that is a weird, that is a weird one. I always get the weirdest problems to solve you know always me everybody else it's like oh just replace the thermostat oh i fixed my problem oh I replaced my relays ah oh, fix my problem i replaced the fuse fix my problem replace the obp relay it fixed my problem now this car now at least uh yeah, that's great voltage at least with this car you know i mean uh they probably, the girl probably that owned this probably got rid of it saying, yeah, no, yeah, I don't know, there's some weird things going on with this car and mechanics probably did all kinds of stuff. Like, I don't know. You know, the thing is, is there's, it's hard to find schematics, but uh, anyways, uh, this is John. I'm done. Big shout out to uh, Brittany Wright for uh, supplying that 1990 schematic that uh, is applicable for this 1992 W124. This is John. Another job done. Okay, there's my there's my switch to activate the high speed. Okay, here's the schematic I came up with. If you wanted to attempt this, do at your own risk. Right. So there's your push button unit. Uh, like we we're talking before, and there's that sensor for the automatic function. That, trips the signal, sends the ground to there to 85. Um, fans come on high speed. Now, what I did is I um, I put a, uh, there's a switch, there's the dash mounted switch. One side of it is going to a ground behind the dashboard. Okay. Wherever you find a brown wire there, there, there that's a ground. Um, and then that switch, uh, when you turn it on, it sends the ground signal down here. You intercept this wire, which is the trigger wire on my car. It's pin 11 on the right side. Um, and it sends the ground signal to 85 and turns on the switch. You know, sometimes you want it to cool, cool keep that engine cool, like extreme heat, you know. I don't know how long you can leave that high-speed fan on. They say, yeah, you'll wear, wear out the bearings. You know, if you'll leave it on for a half hour, 45 minutes. But, you know, 10 minutes, it, you know, it'll cool it down. And it'll start cooling within 30 seconds. You'll see your gauge go down. Anyways, um, that's what I did. Okay. Oh, God, is it hot in here? It's 101 degrees. Ugh. Oh, God, 
Okay, uh, what else, what else, what else, what else? Okay, I'm gonna update, uh, I gotta work on the pin out on Photoshop. Um, try to get it correct. Uh, where, 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 where? Is it this? No, it's, yeah, it's, it's this pin out. This is what Brittany uh, sent me this part over here. And I started numbering everything and I made the wire colors on this, but uh, this right here, this side is correct. This side, I'm gonna update it so all these colors go down one hole, move down to there, and then it's correct. And then maybe the color uh, purple gray, anything purple is vi violet. I don't think they don't have purple here, do they? They have pink. Yeah, violet right here. Come and that later. Hell, no. I can't make it any bigger. I just got this Photoshop, and it's like sometimes it works. There. No. Uh, there. <laughs> I'll tell you. Yeah, see, it's violet. Kind of looks purpley, doesn't it? So, uh, yeah, I'll update that and uh, see if I can maybe include it in this video correct one. You can do a screenshot. If you ever have this issue, most of you will not have this issue. The only thing that's, th that's cool that I like that's useful is this switch right here. And it's a ground. It's not a positive wire. You don't want positive wires going to this to activate any, any electric fan in any car. You don't want a positive wire going to a switch. You want the ground wire that doesn't really carry any current, you know? It's just a ground signal. You can't get shock, fire, overheating, stuff like that. Okay? That's green. Blown head gasket. <laughs>